In this episode, I'm with Marcus Mora, the GOAT of making money through sales funnels. And the problem is, is I think a lot of people, they don't know their metrics, and so they quit. They stop advertising, they're like, I'm not closing anything. But wait a minute, dude, look at your cost per click is amazing. Your leads are exactly who you want to talk to. They're coming to your webinars. He who pays the most for leads wins. It's our favorite because it converts ridiculously well. Okay. Also, right now, I can't believe I'm saying this, is right now the cheapest is advertising really? option on LinkedIn. It can't be crap. It, you have to speak to that audience in a way that's going to beeline to their heart mm -hmm. and punch them in the face so, so hard that they go, I, I can't get this out of my mind. Right. If your platform is not going to revolutionize the industry, then it's not going to revolutionize a prospect, somebody who's looking. Right. right? Everyone wants to be great, but only few actually get there. And I'm on a mission to find out what all the greatest have in common. I've traveled tirelessly to find, sit down, and talk with GOATs, people that are arguably the greatest of all time at what they do. Sales, marketing, advertising, business, podcasts, branding, you name it. The way they do things may be different, but they all seem to see the world the same way. To them, success is not only achievable, but inevitable. And we'll get inside their heads as they share their expertise with me each week. My name's Mike Arce, and this is The Goat Show. This episode is sponsored by Loud Rumor. If you own a fitness studio, crowd therapy, or massage business, there is no company in the industry better at generating high quality leads than Loud Rumor. In just the last two years, Loud Rumor has worked with nearly 1,000 fitness and wellness companies and won ranking Arizona's Ad Agency of the Year in 2017. Getting more paying members in the door can be tough. Let Loud Rumor do the heavy lifting and get new people in your doors every day. Go to loudrumor.com and learn more. Also sponsored by Agency GSD. Starting a digital agency was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. Building it, however, was a lot more challenging than I expected. I always wish someone just gave me a roadmap that I could follow and just let me be a fly on the wall at the successful agencies out there so I could really see how it's done. Agency GSD allows you to do just that. Stop playing small and visit agencygsd.com to learn how to help hundreds of clients get it to seven figures and be extremely profitable along the way. Again, go to agencygsd.com. What's up everybody, I'm Mike Garcia. Welcome back to another episode of The Goat Show where we interview people that are arguably the greatest of all time at what they do. And today, I'm here with Marcus Mora and he is the absolute goat of making money through sales funnels. And we're gonna talk all about that today. Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Man, I'm so excited. Last time I talked to you, well, I think the first time I heard about you, uh, the, the rumor, well actually it wasn't a rumor, it was a proclaimed thing at an event that uh -huh. you made $30 million in one funnel. Then later on, I heard that number went up, and I don't even know what it's at right now. Where, <laughs> where, that, what's that funnel look like right now? Well, it, so there's a lot to that funnel, right? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we're, we're way past 30 million, but really 30 million is where based on where what's that? Where are you at? Well, it, so it, it's complicated. It's way past 30 million because what it is, is all of our franchisees throughout the nation, we have about 120 locations, uh, countrywide and the revenues that are being generated from, uh, from all those franchisees are, are over $50 million today. Over $50 million today. Yeah. Wow. Per year, per year, right? We're at $50 year. million in revenues per, per year. year. That's a Franchise lot. wise. Yeah. Yeah. That's we're very proud of it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you about funnels. We've had Russell Brunson on the show. Mm -hmm. We've got a great you know, opportunity to talk with him about it. But he's, you know, I think he, we were talking about a lot like between that and webinars and just yeah. process of webinars and you know, I don't think we dug deep enough into sales funnels and how amazing they can be when you've really got the right things in, in motion. Right. So I want to dissect your sales funnel a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. By a little bit, I mean a lot. A lot, a okay. lot, okay. So I want to All dissect right. it okay. and I want to also find out the mindset behind it mm -hmm. and what pieces do you think are the pieces that maybe most people are missing or not paying enough attention yeah. to, yeah. but to you, those are the pieces that mean a lot. Is that, is that yeah, fair? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Before we dive into that, I do want to ask you, what were you doing before you created your first sales funnel? Man, what was I doing? Well, it's funny as I think as marketers, we've been creating sales funnels forever, right? Mm -hmm. but, but maybe before creating the sales funnel for our company, uh, Amada would start there perhaps, right? right? 
Uh, so I was a, a mortgage guy up until 2008 when there was a, a mortgage business to, to, to have. And in 2008, we lost everything, okay. right? Just, just completely crashed, right? Um, and from that time until about 2012, I was really just trying to figure out what to do, like what to go. What, and, and it was a whole idea of having to reinvent, right? Because up to 2008, I knew myself as a mortgage guy, right? When I introduced myself to somebody, I'd say, I'm a mortgage guy. That's right. what I do, right? right. And so it was a, a big period of, of trying to, to reinvent myself. Uh, and it wasn't until 2012 that, that we started this new company where that reinvention happened. Um, so really, what was I doing before creating this funnel that we're talking about right now? Right. Funny enough is, is trying to reinvent myself, trying to figure out what was my next move. So you really didn't have a lot going on at the time. No, right? no, really didn't. Okay. So, so that's how powerful sales funnels are. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but okay. I think it, all, all of your experiences, everything you do from the time you start kind of add up to where you are today, right? right. The, I, it, even though we didn't have a whole lot going on right before we started this company, there was other inventions and other things that, that uh, if, at least for me, taught me a lot about reaching an audience, about what do people respond to and what do people not respond to, right? So I think it's a culmination of all those experiences that led to us creating this, this funnel that's been so successful. Okay. So now when you went to create this funnel, what was the objective? Who were you looking to attract? Who were you looking to sell? Yeah. Um, what, what was, who was the goal here? So, uh, the, so our company is a franchise, right? And so for maybe for some of you guys that, I mean, I know what a franchise is, but if you know marketing, if you listen to Russell Brunson, a franchise really is a high ticket item, right? Because what you're saying is, is hey, uh, come and buy a franchise from us mm -hmm. and we are going to show you exactly what to do. We're going to give you the systems. We're going to give you the training. We're going to give you the right. coaching. We are going to show you how to become successful. And especially in a franchise, it, it can't just be lip service. You really have to have all of the tools that this person, this entrepreneur needs in order to be successful. But in exchange, that franchisee is going to pay. So for example, our franchise is a $48,000 franchise. Okay. So $48,000 all in, I can have a license to use. That's so very license, good question. But then we still have to build and all. You still stuff. have to go build it, right? So the initial right. investment is going to be anywhere between 80,000 to 175,000 for you to even get going. Like to make a customer service. Yeah, your right. first six months of opening one of our businesses, you could spend 80 to 175,000. Okay. But the franchise fee alone is gonna be $48,000. Got it. Okay. So pretty, pretty big investment, right? I mean, you're yeah. not, it's not a, a and, and the other thing too is we don't really have what, you know, we talk in our industry about a tripwire, right? Is hey, get my book. And if you like my book, hey, why don't you come to my mastermind? If you like my mastermind, why don't you sign up for, this is, I've got a franchise. Would you like to buy it? Right. right? There's, there's nothing really that leads to it. So what we were trying to do is, is, is reach an audience. So you think about all of that, right? $48,000. Uh, it's, a, it's a very long commitment, right? It's a 10-year agreement. So if you are a franchisee of a lot of senior care, you're signing an agreement that you will be a licensee for 10 years. Okay. Right? It's a long time. So our goal is how do we find the audience? that when we put this opportunity in front of them, that they will say, I could see that. I could see myself spending $48,000 on a franchise fee. I can see myself working my tail off to build this business. And I can see it, and I think I might be able to do that with Amada Senior Care, which is our, our company, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we were trying to do. Okay, so that was the goal. That was the goal. So now, where does it all start? Like, what would you say the majority of that traffic begins? Is it Facebook, Instagram, YouTube? Are you running AdWords? I mean, where would you say the, the bulk of this traffic yeah, is? Yeah, so we're, we're a little weird. So the bulk of our traffic actually happens on LinkedIn. <coughs> okay, LinkedIn. Yeah. So, so are you targeting people that are already franchise owners? No, so it's interesting. So, uh, and, and I, think, I think so much of, of marketing, I think marketers sometimes don't really think about their audience. What... What we knew is, is we had to surgically go after the absolute perfect ideal audience, right? Okay. And uh, when we started the business in 2012, and I have two business partners in Amada. Uh, one of them was a lineman for the Chicago Bears. Okay. And after he got cut from the NFL, he just was an entrepreneur, right? The, uh, Tafa, he's six foot six, half black, half Samoan, just a massive guy, right? Big right. teddy bear. And Tafa's never had a job in his life. 
Okay. Ne the guy has never had never a job. worked for anyone. No. Okay. My other partner, uh, who was actually the center for, for so so Tafa was the center and uh, uh, Chad was the quarterback in, in college. That's how they okay. met. Uh, he worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals for about 10 years. Okay. So we start this franchise, right? And the franchise is taking care of seniors. That's, that's what we do. A lot of senior care, we take care of seniors. Okay. And we started thinking, who would be the ideal franchisee? Who's going to be the person that's going to come in, buy our franchise, and is going to be just rock this thing? And, and we're talking, and Chad goes, well, I spent you know, 10 years at Pfizer, and that really taught me how to walk into hospitals. It taught me about healthcare. It taught me... Uh, uh, the, the whole system and how it works. And, and so when I started doing home care, I really understood how, the, how to get to the referral sources. I, I already knew I was kind of like this secret agent, right? So we started thinking, wait a minute, what if we could actually get our franchise opportunity in front of other medical salespeople? Other people who sell uh, uh, drugs and uh, medical devices and imaging, all these other things for hospitals, right? So we start thinking, well, we can't do that really on Facebook. We can't really do it on Twitter. We can't do it on Instagram. We're looking at all the social medias out there. You can't really do that through uh, Google Ads because on Google Ads, you know what somebody typed in, but you don't know if that person typing in works for Pfizer or works for IBM right, or right. is a chef. You don't know that. Right. LinkedIn is the one place where if I know the title of the person I want to find, they're a director of marketing, or they are a, uh, uh, a director of, of media, right? Or I want to reach people who work for IBM, for Merck, for Pfizer, for Disney, whatever you want, right? It's listed on LinkedIn. Think about your LinkedIn profile, right? right? You talk about where you work, how long you've been working, and what your positions have been, what industry you're in. Right. All of that is in there, and you give that information to LinkedIn you know, gladly, because that's, that's what LinkedIn is all about. So we, we, we had this idea of we might be able to reach our audience on LinkedIn. And that's what we started doing. Okay. So now with LinkedIn, are you running LinkedIn ads or are you doing direct outreach to specific people? Yeah. So that was, that was the other thing too. There's a lot of LinkedIn folks out there that say, hey, what you need to do is get on LinkedIn and do 20 minutes a day or an hour a day and reach, right? Reach people, friend request, friend request. And I, I saw that and maybe... I just I thought, man, I don't have the patience for that. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to do that. Right. So there had to be another way to do it. And we started looking at LinkedIn has about three or four different ways that you can pay to advertise to your ideal prospect. Okay. So let's say that... Well, um, what are those ways? Yeah. So, and this is, this is actually really cool because depending on how you reach them is going to be your cost, right? So when you're on LinkedIn... Uh, you can pay to send a message to your audience in bulk. You can pay through LinkedIn or is it through a LinkedIn. party? It's really? through LinkedIn and you can do it on your is own. Is that using Sales Navigator? Not even using Sales Navigator. If you just go and click the advertise button on LinkedIn, you go into LinkedIn, you can pick your audience. You can say, okay, I want, so for example, uh, you can say, I want male over the age of 40. I want them to work for IBM. And I want them to be in sales at IBM. And I want them to uh, be in sen high seniority, mid seniority, entry level. Wow. You put all of that in there. And so, so that's, for, I'm going to stop you for a second. Because yeah. that's, like now I'm like, I'm already planning my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I can say I want to target people that work at Orange Theory Fitness. Yes. Right? As yes. an owner. Yeah. And I can send a message to all those people like that. Like that. You just have to pay for it. And then your message, what's cool is that then your next step on LinkedIn. I you get can, to pay for it because I'd rather have the opportunity to pay for it than not have the opportunity exactly. to pay for it. So exactly. At least amazing. what you know is when your message reaches the, in, the LinkedIn inbox of your candidate, you know so much. Now, see what this was so cool. So you, you get the audience, right? So what, okay, what was your audience again? Let's go, let's go through it. Let's it say was, I'm going after uh, fitness franchise owners. Oh, dude, fitness franchise owners, right? Okay. And you can even say what state, what city, what state I don't want to, what cities I do want to, right? You can do all of that. If you want, you can just do a campaign just in the eastern states or just in L.A., right? Right. So now when you go write your message to them, what's really cool is you know so much about them already. It's like you're psychic, right? You're psychically reaching in and, and 
going to this audience who has no idea who you are, but when you start writing, then, then LinkedIn allows you to write with mail merge, right? Hello, Bob, right? You, their name goes into it. Holy and then you say, hey, listen, I was just looking at your profile and I love your fitness experience. Or you can go even deeper. What if maybe you want to say, I want to reach everybody who owns an Orange Theory. Right. So you can say, hey, Bob, I love that you own a, or, uh, own a Orange Theory Fitness. And listen, over the last five years, I have helped X amount of Orange Fitness, Orange Theory Fitness owners mm -hmm. go from this to this. I'd like to invite you to learn more. So when that message goes to a LinkedIn inbox, right, which is, which is so less cluttered now, well, it's about to get a lot more cluttered now, right? But God damn it. I know, okay, let's, okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go back to asking about the mortgage industry. Let's, let's, talk, about, let's talk about the mortgage okay, industry. Okay, let's talk about mortgage, but I mean, here's- I'm the, kidding, we, we can talk we'll about it. We'll go, we'll go, let's, let's just keep rolling. You know what, whoever's watching, I'm glad I helped them. I'm yeah, that's get, right, I'm right? I'm gonna get there first. Good. I'm gonna get there first. So, so when you send them that message, they click on it, and what's great is, here's the other kicker that's so cool. LinkedIn allows you that when they say learn more and they click, LinkedIn will serve them a landing page on LinkedIn itself. So what we found is when we were kicking them out to a thank you to a landing page, like a ClickFunnels page, or like something. a ClickFunnels landing page, what happens is is the audience is when you're in LinkedIn, there's trust. As soon as I go out of LinkedIn, I my audience has to buy the trust again, right? My landing page. Yeah. So what we're able to do. And actually, uh, Raphael, who's actually not on camera here, he's back there, but he is really a lot of the, uh, <laughs> the intelligence behind this. But so um, we're, we're able to serve them a page that's served by LinkedIn. So the trust is there. And it just says, hey, you should find out more about this. Click on here. And it, and it automatically fills in their name, their phone number, because it's under LinkedIn profile. On the landing page. And it fills out their email address. They don't even have to type. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is click it now. What's cool is, is once they opt in, then the next page shows up on LinkedIn still that says, thank you so much, but go ahead and, and click, click on through. We're going to show you a little bit more. And that's where Russell Brunson comes in, right? That's where ClickFunnels comes in, where they click it and we send them over to our landing page. And we now can, the trust is stronger. The trust is stronger. We got the information, right? And, and now I can send them over to a landing page, but I can really talk a little bit differently to them. But then the magic continues. So if this was an ad to Orange Theory franchisees, or if this is an ad to lawyers, if this is an ad, I don't care who your audience is, right? Right, right. But now on the landing page, instead of serving them a landing page that says, hey, I'm Mike Arson, I'm the deal. I'm Mike Arson, I'm awesome. I'm Mike Arson, I'm handsome, I'm not. No, 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 no. The landing page can say, hey, Orange Theory owner, let me tell you why I can help you, Orange Theory owner, because you know who they are. Okay. No one going to that page is going to be from 24-Hour Fitness. Right, right. They are an owner of Orange Theory. Right. So what made us successful is really never dropping the conversation to the general level, okay. which I think we do a lot of, right? You get the information and you just put them on a generic page that's just talking about us, right? Mm -hmm. It's like what I'm doing right now. Like if you're on a date with somebody and all they can talk about is themselves, yeah, disinterested. It's really boring, right? right, right. I mean, it sucks. Right. But if you're on a date with somebody and all they talk about is, let me learn more about you. Let me tell you how I can help you. Let me tell you why my, my coaching, my business, my market, whatever is good for you, then you, you want to listen. You want to hear more, right? right? You want right. to get that information. So that's our funnel. That's our funnel from end to end takes them there. Do you use video in that first LinkedIn landing page? No, because LinkedIn doesn't allow it. Okay. So then obviously in the thank you page, you don't either. We do, we do. On the thank you page. I of, uh, well, our, our, our ClickFunnels landing page, we do. Well, Click, I thought it was, yeah. you know, first one's a landing page on LinkedIn. Then even the thank you page. Is a LinkedIn, is a LinkedIn thank you page. So no video that there. That doesn't allow video on and it. And then yeah. you, you tell them to go to the ClickFunnels link or to a link next page. Right. Through, which is a right. ClickFunnels landing page. And yeah. now you have video? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what's the, the, what's the first landing page on LinkedIn, like in your world? What's it pitching? Like what, what, what's the action you're telling them to take next and why are they doing it? Yeah. So, uh, and, and this is also thinking about the fact that, uh, we, we, in, in the only thing that I have for this person is a franchise opportunity. Okay. Um, I don't have other things that they can acquire or buy other things they can experiment. Right, right. And the fact that we're selling a franchise and for most of the folks in, in our, in our, uh, industry, you're selling something that's over $40,000. So um, really what we start to do at that point is we start to just indoctrinate them into the possibility. 
So you got to think about the fact that when I'm taking somebody that is in corporate America, most likely in my situation, you, I think have a situation where your audience is already entrepreneurial, but, but I have to do the red pill, blue pill with them now, right? I have to be Morpheus and kind of go, right. you're in corporate America. Let me just, let me just open your mind to this, this other career path. So with, with our audience, they are going from, they work for, uh, let's say they work for IBM. Honeywell. Or Honeywell, IBM. right. So what I'm telling them is, you used to think that your only opportunity was to get promoted or go work for Honeywell's competitor or go start a business. Well, let me give you option number four, which is what if you just start a franchise where we will show you what to do. We'll give you the support. We'll be there with you. You won't be, you'll be a business for yourself, but not by yourself, all of those things. So our thank you page is really, the indoctrination is sort What's of- What's a thank you page? The, 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 well, the, the, the landing, landing page, page from ClickFunnels, right? Got it, okay. Is really just a, here's a, an idea for you. And we're not saying this is right. We're not saying that this is gonna be the thing you're gonna do. Right. But you ought to start thinking about it because of, of all of these reasons, right? You really should consider this as something that you could do. And then we invite them on to a webinar. We Got go it. into Russell's perfect webinar, perfect webinar sequence from there. Okay. So that's the landing page for ClickFunnels. Yeah. Um, what about the landing page, like in your message, when you first outreach, right? And then once you message them, what does that landing page say that's inside of LinkedIn? Like, what are you asking them to do? You know, it's really interesting. Uh, LinkedIn is very economical. They, so they have a character limit on everything. So like what, what, do you know how much? Man, the character limits on, on uh, it's very little. Like you can say, like you have this much space and there's two lines worth. Okay. 24 characters for just the headline. Wow. 24 characters, yeah. So you can't, it, it, listen, it is, you have to just, get just, to the point. you have to get to the point. LinkedIn does not allow you to write a whole epistle. If you're doing it for free, if you're doing outreach, if you're doing in-mail of your own, you can write whatever the heck you want, right? right. But on if you have a landing page, you take people to. When you're paying LinkedIn, they require you make it very so, again. So what do you tell them to do in that short of time? That's why a lot of it is, uh, so for example, uh, we have a friend of ours that we help and, and they uh, are looking at, so I don't wanna give away their audience, but I'll give away my audience. So for example, we'll say, uh, find out why dozens of other pharmaceutical reps um, are leaving their jobs for this one thing. And pharmaceutical reps is a merge field? No, I write that in. You write that in. But I know that, but You're when targeting. I go to my audience targeting, right. they, I can say only show this to pharmaceutical reps. Got it. Only show this to recruiters or to lawyers, whatever your audience is. Got it. So now I can write content even though it's small. But that's the beauty of the fact that it's small. I think it's actually okay. okay. As long as you don't make your audience too broad. Okay. If you go and you just say, uh, send an in-mail to fitness owners, that, that can be all kinds so of things. things yeah. And so then when you go to your write your 24 characters, it's gonna be really hard to convert. Right. Because your subject line or your, your tagline is small and then, you, I mean, it's so little. Right. So I wouldn't say do not do LinkedIn and I actually, I would, I've, I've become convinced that unless you know your audience as an audience of one, like if I can describe my audience as well as I can describe you, then I want to advertise to you. Okay. If I, if I have an audience that I cannot describe as well as exactly you, Mike, or me, or like your age, your, uh, your career path, how much money you make, how much net worth you have, uh, uh, are you married, single, are you, uh, everything about you. If I can't describe you that way, I don't, I don't think I have an audience. Okay. All right. So that makes sense to me. I'm wanting to see kind of like the progression because I'm thinking if I'm on LinkedIn, right? Let's say you're reaching out to me. I'm a guy that work, works at Honeywell. Yeah. I'm like maybe like a VP of marketing or something like right. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your message, you read your message to me, you know, hey, you know, this is what we got going on. Then I click through because I want to learn more, right? right? So if you want to learn more about how we do it, check it out. So I click through. Now that LinkedIn landing page maybe says something like, you know, find out why so many pharmaceutical reps are, you know, starting uh, Armada Senior Care. Right. Do you say Armada? Ar Ar Armada? Armada. Uh -huh. You say Armada or do yeah. you say like a senior care company or do you give it away right That's away? actually interesting. So uh, we, I usually shy away from talking about us at all. Okay. We'll say a senior care company or a business or, because at that point, my audience has no clue what Armada is. 
Got it. And and so I think a lot a lot of times we, we think about so like the our logo and all that. It's like no, I don't I don't care about our logo. Okay, cool. So it's just right? find out why Farmers Group Reps are starting a senior care. I want to focus as much about them. That's not the about headline. Me. Yeah. And then the body, like I know you're limited, but like, are you bully, are, are you li- listing out bullet points as to the benefits that come along? You with you have room on that very first page. Once they click on your in mail, they go to the, the LinkedIn landing page inside of LinkedIn. You you have room for maybe three bullets. That's Very it. tiny bullets, yeah. Okay. It's it, it, the the and headline. Then you put a call to action button. And then the call to action button. And the call to action, they're they're generous. They they give you like you know visit website, opt in, learn more. Cool. What you can choose. So now once they click on that, then they go to the thank you page inside of LinkedIn. Okay, inside of LinkedIn, and that page, what would it confirm? Like it says, hey, thanks so much. You know. They give you liberty, so you get to write in the fields, right? Still very limited characters. So what I try to do is. I don't try to punch, they've already opted in. So now my only goal in that thank you page is get them to click that extra button to go to my external, now I'm gonna get them out of LinkedIn, right? So would you say something like check out some videos of what other people have done? What I do is I say thank you to continue. Click the button below. So you just want them on and off? Yeah, I, I, want them, I, want them, I want them to, to, so I want the process to feel very, I read the in mail, I went to this thing, it had my information already, I just clicked the button. Okay. And then I went to this page and it said continue. I guess I better continue because LinkedIn is telling me to continue. Got it. Okay, cool. Right? So uh, once you do that, can you build audiences inside of LinkedIn like you can on Facebook? Like you can create custom audiences? Totally. And can you exclude, like let's say we wanted to exclude cli- uh, clients that we already serve Yeah. so that they don't see it? Yeah, I had somebody that wanted to ask me, hey, I, I want to go after recruiters, but I want to make sure I don't go after HR professionals because they're actually different. I didn't even okay. know that they were different. So but. you can upload like an email list of all your customers. And, and say, but don't, don't send this to anybody who said that their industry or that their, their professional designation is HR. Well, you can do that, but can I can you say upload exclude. an email list? You can now, this is something new to LinkedIn. You can okay. take your list now and upload it okay. into LinkedIn. And so now we can exclude our customers. You can now, yeah, and you can now, yeah, you can now retarget as well uh, on, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. That's yeah. pretty cool. So you can okay. actually retarget on LinkedIn. So I love that. So that's yeah. one way on LinkedIn that you go to people. And then what are the other ways? I know that's just one way. So there's other ways. That's a cool way. You started with your favorite, I'm guessing, because that that's a cool. That way. is our favorite. It is yeah. our favorite because it converts ridiculously well. Okay. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. also right now. I can't believe I'm saying this. Is right now the cheapest is advertising really? option on LinkedIn, which is odd, right? That the highest touch ad, the highest touch advertising opportunity on LinkedIn is right now the cheapest. I mean, I'm an advertiser. I speak, I'm here to speak on it in San Diego. I didn't know it. So if an advertiser doesn't really know it, you know, that's you, why you got to assume that a lot of people don't know it underneath yeah. that as well. And it's, if we're already starting to ruin it, okay. uh, pricing has gone up tremendously. We've been advertising on LinkedIn since 2013 or so. And it, the, the, it's already gotten way more expensive than it was back then. Okay. But it's still a good deal. It's, it's insane. Okay. For your ideal audience, I don't think there's a better platform to go after somebody who's given you so much information about who they are. What do you say you pay per per lead or per click or? So we're we're you're you're at about uh, forty to eighty dollars per lead. I know that's a big range. It just depends on which one of the opportunities are you doing, right? Uh, so you asked about the other way. So in your LinkedIn feed, so when you go to LinkedIn now, you have your feed, right? It has all the, and some of the articles that are there are stuff that your friends shared and some of them are sponsored. Those sponsored articles in your newsfeed are incredibly expensive, incredibly expensive. We're talking $7 a click. For, for LinkedIn newsfeed? For LinkedIn wow, newsfeed. really? If not more. We've had $14 a, a click. A click? A click. That's expensive. And what's happening is, is companies like Adobe, companies, I mean, massive organizations are spending fortunes on LinkedIn because they will spend the $14 per click. They're happy to do that because they can go only to their ideal audience. Even though it's $14 per click, they can't get that click on Google. Right. Think about that. Adobe cannot get... Give me all the folks that do a certain type of marketing, right, or graphic design. You can't do that on Google. Right. So, you know, and Russell talks a lot about he who pays the most for leads wins. So that feed is, is LinkedIn can charge as much as they want, right? So we stay away from that. Right. We, don't, we don't use that even though the click-through rate when we have them, we've tested, the click-through rates are just crazy. Like it, Low? 
No, high, high. super high, because it's in your newsfeed. Right. And it looks, it's so legit, right? It looks beautiful. So we reserve that for the really big stuff, right? We reserve, sometimes we'll do that with retargeting, right? Okay. So if we know our audience is really good, let's go retarget them and really get them. And if we are gonna pay seven, eight bucks a click, it better be worth it, right? It better right. convert. But we won't use it for the, for the first uh, hit. Are you able to export that list from that custom audience and import it into Facebook or no. YouTube? Can't do that yet. No, I don't think they'll ever allow you to do that. No? You can, once they're a lead, then, so part of all this is exactly that. So if you're spending, let's just call it $70 a lead on LinkedIn, okay. then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all of our leads and we do a custom audience on Facebook and we target them on Facebook, which is a lot cheaper. Okay, got it. So that's what the progression, right? You start on LinkedIn, super targeted, funnel them over to an email and then upload them to Facebook and then we, and then we just keep you do stuff on YouTube on and Facebook. Instagram as well? I'm gonna tell you, we're not that great at that. No. We're getting better at it. Okay. Um, we do a lot of Facebook. We do, but our, our probably our biggest converting right now is, uh, is Facebook. We need to get better at that. Facebook or LinkedIn? Facebook. Facebook. Well, after LinkedIn, after LinkedIn, our best retargeting is still on Facebook. Okay, cool. Because we're really not that great yet at Instagram and YouTube. Some of it has to do with the fact of our audience being the professionals mm -hmm. and there's there's been sort of for us sort of this mental like let's just keep targeting this way because it works, it works, it works. But there's no doubt that there's a ton of opportunity on Instagram and YouTube and uh, Twitter that we're not using right now. Very cool. Okay, cool. So now let's take it into the funnel a little further. Yeah, okay. you got it. So now this person goes through uh, to, to a landing page that you make on ClickFunnels. By the way, if you guys use ClickFunnels, awesome. If not, ClickFunnelsPromo.com, you get a cool uh, extended trial. Um, so you go to ClickFunnels. Now on ClickFunnels, you have a video and you're selling them to watch a free training to see how it works. Is that what they're doing, which is a webinar? Yeah, so uh, we have them opt-in in for, for a webinar and we've, we've tested a bunch of different things. Do you call it webinar? <clears throat> do you call it free training? What do you we call don't it? call it a training because uh, we want to legally always be make sure that we're speaking to them as a hey, you are prospects because franchising is extremely regulated, right? Okay. Very different from if you're offering a business opportunity or coaching or training. So we have a lot of FTC rules we got to follow. So we don't call it a training. Okay. It's come to a webinar to learn more. What we found is, I think, uh, the reason the webinar works for us is you need to give your audience, I think, an opportunity, opportunity to learn about you voyeuristically. I know that some people have a different connotation to the, the, that word, voyeuristically, but what that means to me is I want you to learn as much as you can about me without me getting you on the phone. Because quite frankly, you don't want to talk to me at this point. Right. I just gave you this like Random. crazy idea, yeah. <laughs> right? Of like, quit your job and do a franchise. Your mind is blown, right? Last thing you want to do is probably get on the phone with me. And we learned that the, the hard way because we used to just kind of follow the tried and true, just dial for oh. dollars, right? That's right. our industry is built on dial for dollars, right? Okay. Everybody in my industry, they're, they're just going crazy. And it just wasn't cool, right? I'm just like, man, stop calling me. Stop emailing me, stop bothering me, you know? Give me, give me some space. So for us, it was important to do that. So we give them their space through a webinar, right? Which allows them to just, when they want to, go and check it out and learn more about it. And then we're able to kind of take another conversation with them. Right, okay, great. Now on that webinar, do you follow the perfect webinar type of system? Sort of, yeah, but uh, in, in a little bit different because, uh, uh, well, now, what would you mean by what system would you say following? Russell Brunson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the three secrets and all that. A, a and little bit. stack at the end. Well, I guess you can't stack in your world. Huh? It's a little bit different, okay. right? Because what, what, we, what we realized is we still have to nurture this audience to break some of their, uh, their, their, their limiting beliefs. beliefs. Yes, right. their limiting beliefs. We have to talk to them about um, this is why our opportunity is so great for you. You already have the skills. Listen, you've been in corporate America for 15 years. You know how to do this. Mm -hmm. you just haven't, you're just not doing it for yourself. Right. And here's everything that we do in our franchise is designed to support you, right? So we're still having those conversations with them. We're still making them kind of breaking down some of those barriers. So as we go to the next stages, the stack really, Russell Brunson's stack is gonna come a little later for us. Okay. Because again, I have one product. Right, right. You I don't, don't have like twelve things that you could throw in. No, that's it. So let's say yeah. I were to get to that first ClickFunnels landing page, right, to get me to watch the webinar. 
what kind of method do you use? Do you use a method where it's like, as soon as they say, I want to watch it, they watch the replay or do they get into the next webinar and is it live? Or is it like a webinar is always starting in five yeah, minutes because you got man. another webinar? Like what, what, how does it look for me? We have done so many different ways right now. Like I can tell you what we do right now because it's what we're doing, but we have tried so many ways. I got to tell you though, um, so far, nothing has been as good as the live webinar. Live. Why do Nothing's you think been that as is? good. I, you know what? I think our audience, so we just went back to doing a recorded webinar. We do, and I still do it. I do uh, a recorded webinar on Tuesday, and I do a live on Thursday. And what we're trying to do is to really break same down webinar. our notions. Same webinar. Okay. Yeah, same webinar. The invite looks the same. But the recorded one, I still think that the simulated live uh, is only fooling us. I mean, the audience kind of knows that it is simulated live, right? Okay. Our audience gets it, right? Some of them don't, but it's so funny. As soon as we put on the automated and we then talk to them later, they go, yeah, I was on that recorded webinar uh, the other day. They even say recorded. They say it. Yeah, they know, right? They know that it's a recorded webinar. And so we're testing different things, but there was a, there was a, while we were building the company, we have 120 something franchisees today, right? We started in 2012 and now we have 120 franchisees. And uh, I, would, I was doing uh, like two or three webinars a week wow. because it just worked. I mean, the, the fact that I was live, the fact that I was able to answer questions for people that were going to pay $48,000, at least for us, it worked better. But so, I ran out of time. I couldn't, so let's I couldn't say your next forever. webinar, let's say your webinar is on Thursdays. Yeah. Let's ask when you want to film. Is there, by the way, is there a day that you just know works best? Like I know you said Thursday and Tuesday, but. Yeah, so Tuesdays and Thursdays have seemed to work best what because of, of day? Uh, we do it at, at uh, two o'clock. Pacific. Pacific standard. And you target both, both East Coast, West Coast. So it'd be like four or five o'clock on the East Coast, depending yeah. on what time of year yeah. it is. Okay. Because my audience is usually busy in the morning. That's when they go in to make their calls okay. uh, and their sales calls. In the afternoon, it's a little easier for them. And so we realize if we do it at 10, it's, it's hard for them to get to. If we do it at two, they're a lot more free. Okay. So now once I say, yeah, I'm, I'm registered, um, but let's say it's Monday, right? Yeah. The webinar is on Thursday, I guess, right? So if that's the case, oh, by the way, do you run ads to it for that six day period? Or do you just run it to like the three days prior to the actual webinar date? Because I heard that it might be a good idea to only run it three days before, but you're the pro here. So. Run what three days before? The, like the... let's say your ads on Thursday. <clears throat> yeah. So then you should really, what, what I remember learning was Wednesday, Tuesday. So really just running it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, leading into Thursday, not running it like Sunday, Saturday or anything like that. But you've made more money in a funnel than anybody else. So I'm going to ask you, well, have you tested further than three days? And, and is there a difference to register them and then hold a webinar? Yeah. Like later I, on? I won't even see an ad for this webinar if it's not within a three day window of the live. Yeah. So good question. So we do kind of this ongoing webinar twice a month. I mean, I'm sorry, twice a week, right? It's, it's always happening, right? Either recorded or I'm doing it, but it's always happening. Uh, but then what we do is, is this is just to indoctrinate. But then we do once a month, we do a larger webinar and that one we're promoting 14 days in advance. Wow. So that one we're promoting to on Facebook. We're promoting to our list. Uh, we're promoting on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. We promote that thing and we do 14 days in advance okay. and we build, 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 build. And then, and we've always noticed that man, the last day we are build, build, build. Are you doing email text, yeah. uh, retargeting ads? Like all, yeah. All of them, all of them. Yeah. Okay. Once, once a month we're hitting, we're hitting the audience. Uh, and, and, and obviously what, what we're able to do is if they, if they click on the link on the email, that says that, uh, and then our system will stop the emails to them, right? So, so if, you, if they say stop reminding me? If they stop reminding me, but, or so if, if email number one goes out 14 days, right? 14 days to my webinar. Email goes out and it says, hey, you got to get on this webinar. We're going to be interviewing our very first franchisee ever. Oh, God, I was saying after they register. And then after they register, then we have an indoctrination system uh, that, that talks to them about why this webinar is so great. Here's a story about one of our franchisees. So we take 14 days to indoctrinate them until they get to, to the webinar. Okay. Um, but, and, and that indoctrination system actually right now is happening through uh, email and Facebook. Retargeting uh, Retargeting. Or, or do you use chatbots? <clears throat> no, you know what? No. We're not using any chatbots right now. Okay. Not that, uh, you just I haven't don't, done it. just haven't done it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just haven't done it. So retargeting ads on Facebook, and emails, that's mm -hmm. what they're getting yeah. leading up to the webinar after they've registered. That's right. And when you say indoctrinate, like what kind of like message are you wanting to send them to ensure that they show up? So I think the, the strongest message we can tell them is 
So I think what we want to know is there is, there is so uh, uh, the Honeywell person you talked about. If, if I can show them that there is another Honeywell person mm -hmm. who, took this, who took this challenge, uh, quit their jobs, started something amazing, and they're now successful, if I can show them this story, then my uh, probability of selling them a franchise is going to be much higher. So in the end, my focus there for those 14 days is to get them to see that somebody like them already did this. Got it. Because I, I don't think my audience are today, they're not pioneers. Right, right. They, they don't want to be, as, as uh, uh, Russell talks about, right? they don't want to be the guy you know, face down in the mud with arrows on their back. They want to know somebody already did that. Right. So if I can convince them that that's the case, like, you're, not, you're not like Lewis and Clark here. Right. right. Like there's I have dozens of other people just like you who are Honeywell sales managers okay. who own one of our franchises. Right. So in your case, hey, listen, here's another Orange Theory Fitness that is already doing this. Right. So listen, you've got to get on the webinar because we're going to show you a lot more about how we do this. How do we set up your business? How do we teach you? How do we coach you? What does it all look like? Um, and I, when, we've, when we've shown them that there's somebody like them, the, the adoption rate of getting to the webinar at least is, is much higher. That's really cool. Okay, great. So you take them through that stuff. Now they time for the webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay, you send them text reminders about the webinar. We at send all? them text reminders. So yep. you collect phone number on registration. We do. So yeah, we're every single ad we do has phone number. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what system are you using for text? What system are you using for email? Uh, we use Zoho. So for uh, for, for both, yeah. Oh, for both. And, and well, and a plug-in for Zoho for the text. I don't even know what the plug-in is, but Twilio. Uh, yeah, Twilio. We use Twilio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So great. So we use that. Now it's time for the webinar. What do you like to use? Zoom. Go to webinar. Yeah, you know, we're still on go to webinar today. Okay. Uh, a lot of it has to do with implementation, and it's a little easier to implement. We've tried a bunch of different things, um, but right now, go to webinar. Cool. It, it works. At the end of the webinar, mm -hmm. do you tell them what it would cost? Yeah. And they, don't, they can't pay right there. They got to get on the call with somebody, right? Like schedule Absolutely. a call. Okay, yeah. So they got to schedule yeah. a call. And so um, the calls are free, right? It doesn't cost any money. I no, know. we don't charge them a dime to go through this entire process. A lot okay. of uh, our average is about three months okay. to get somebody from opting to buying. And that's yeah. taking out the extraneous, like, you know, the folks that have been in our list for five years, right? right. We're, we're, and people that buy within a couple weeks. Yeah. But, but the average is about three months to get somebody to that train of thought of, okay, let's, let's do this. Got so it. we know it's going to be something that's going to take some time. And yeah. we're totally okay with, with them taking their time. At the end of the webinar, in fact, we invite them to the next stage, which is we know that. So if you live in Oklahoma, well, we know that Oklahoma is open. Uh, so what we're going to do though, is let me show you why Oklahoma is so amazing. So you have custom webinars for a location. Yeah. Wow. So you don't, you can't, you don't just do one webinar for an entire like country, wherever they may be coming in from. No. Well, good question. So actually what's funny is, is we go, that first webinar is, is broad to everybody. After that first webinar, we take them and personalize it. After that, we run them through a personalized system that we're, they're having one-on-one -on -one calls with my team. Okay, so on the call, the guy says Oklahoma's open. Well, even before we get them on and we invite them to the webinar, uh, we try, once they opted into web, what's great about opting into webinar is the team can go and look at everybody who opted in and call them and say, hey, I saw you registered for the webinar. That's great. Hey, listen, and I see you're in, you're in Oklahoma. Okay. Oh, we're, we're, we're open in Oklahoma. Do you have, and, and we might answer some questions. We might talk to them. Right? So as much as possible, if they've opted in for a webinar, we make that phone call before even before. Even oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you might close people before the webinar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we is may that be, a goal? To, yeah. To, to, uh, like, hey, don't tell no, me to go to the webinar. No, Let's, no. We get them on the webinar. So you want them to go through the we webinar? We want them to go through the webinar. Yeah, okay. yeah. We make right. sure they get on the webinar. So you, you call them beforehand. You got their number. You call them to, like, you know, congratulate them for joining the webinar. It's awesome. Yeah. We're excited to have you on. Yeah. And then we say, I know you're in Oklahoma too. Yeah, that's actually a really open area. You're going to love this stuff. Yes. And then uh, what questions do you have? I'd love to have any questions you have going into it. Just make sure it's really worth your time. Yeah. And then from there, then I say, okay, awesome. Well, look, I still want you to go to the webinar, really, uh, have, uh, really get an understanding of what we're doing here. But then I'd love to jump on a call with you right afterwards to see if there's any questions I can help yeah. answer. And the team actually, yeah, and the team also has the ability that if they're talking to somebody and they are just hot, 
The team sometimes will just send a recorded webinar to them. You know what? I'll just send it to you right now. Let me send it to you right now. Go right here, click, click on this link and go in and, and I want to listen to it right now. And they go and they listen to it right now. So Got it. we're able to sort of adjust it based smart. on what that conversation looks like, right? Very smart. Okay. So now once you uh, get them to the webinar, then you call them back. Hey, what'd you think? Right? And you, yeah. You call them up. But on the webinar, so I can't remember who said this, but I, and I, I'll, maybe I'll just take credit for it. Um, you know, in wrestling matches, right? When you're lo looking at the wrestling match, they're, they're going at each other and they're, they're fighting with each other. And the announcer during that is going, now guys, next Tuesday, we have Sam the Wrench against right, right. Bobby the whatever, right? <laughs> Sam the Wrench, is he real? So, I think so, <laughs> Sam, Sam, Sam the Wrench, All right? right? So, so the, 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 they're fighting, they're going at each other and the announcer is like promoting the next event, right? Mm -hmm. So we found that to be very important is that when you're doing a webinar, and we don't do it at the very end. What I do is I start the webinar and I give them a little bit of content and I go, and by the way, your very next event is we are actually gonna walk you through what Oklahoma looks like, what Pasadena looks like, what Nashville looks like. And we tell them how important that is. And I do that in the middle of the webinar, is I build for the impending event, build for, for what the, what's coming. And then I go on to a couple other things. And then at the end I come back and go, so listen, you've got to schedule you're the impending event, right? You gotta buy the next fight, because this now, fight's now gonna be rad. You're using that in the example of wrestling, right? With the events and stuff, what do you call it? What I call that, the next, you, yeah, the next you call? You don't call it event, right? Like, yeah, we don't call it event. What it's, are you saying? It's, it's, your it's a, a, a territory review. Okay, it's not even that, that sexy, really. It doesn't matter, I yeah. just kinda of wanted to see what it was. It's okay, a territory cool. review, because, and again, it's sort of this idea of personalizing it to them. This is why Oklahoma's amazing, right? You're always, we're always trying to personalize why this is so great for them. Okay. And we spend very little time, what's so funny, we spend very little time talking about us. We talk about us in a way of why we are so good for them. Right, like right. why and we're the perfect vendor for them, not why they're the perfect client for us. Yeah, every time it's about why the territory is amazing, why the demographics are amazing, why you need to, and then we invite them to, and then we drill into, okay, now the next call is one-on-one -on -one with my director of marketing, and he's actually sitting there going, man, the demographics in Oklahoma are rad. Let me show you. Well, actually, this is where I think there's some problems here, but let's go here. And, and we open it up to them. So you've, you, you're already doing stuff very different than what I've heard yeah. people doing, right? Like the LinkedIn thing to me is unique. I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet. Right, yeah. You which know? is crazy. Right. Um, the way that you call people before the webinar mm -hmm. is unique to me. Yeah. Um, the fact that you'll do two to three lives a week if you need to, yeah. that's unique to me. And you have a certain webinar you'll do 14 days in advance, that's unique. Do you do anything with countdown timers at all throughout? We have had count countdown timers on our landing pages. I don't think we have any countdown timers on our pages today. No? Okay. Only for webinars. The webinar has a countdown. Or, or events. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, for the special events we do have a countdown. The the monthly webinars because they're so far there's away. A, there's a countdown for that. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so you do that very differently, and then the call after it's kind of cool because you've already talked to the person that's calling you now. Yeah. Or you might they might even call you. So that's a good point. After the webinar is over, do you wait for people to call you, or do you start calling those people? No, we start calling those people. Oh, here's the other thing we didn't talk about. Speaking of that, what's different about LinkedIn is when you get that lead from LinkedIn and it's Bob Smith, and all we get is name, phone number, email. We don't go city and state and everything you else. You get that from them even if they don't put it in because if they put it in LinkedIn, you're good? You got it all? Well, they, they uh, on the form, it already fills that information in. So they can choose to delete it? They can choose to delete it. Nothing's but, No, we make it mandatory. <laughs> oh, you make it We mandatory. make it mandatory. We tell LinkedIn, hey, they can't submit unless they give us name, phone number, email. Okay, awesome. But what's great about it is, is when our, our team is calling them before the webinar, we bring them up on LinkedIn. So there's a couple things that we can do. Uh, you can send them a friend request. So I have somebody managing our profiles, right, that will send them a LinkedIn request, right? Mm -hmm. So they get that before the webinar. Uh, and when our team calls, they can say, hey, I, I was calling you just to make sure, did you get the information we were sending you? Sometimes it gets stuck in spam, I just wanna make sure. Yeah, I got it, hey, and I saw you, you, you uh, re, uh, you're uh, registered for the webinar. That's great. And I saw you work at, you worked, you've been at Honeywell for 20 years. Mm -hmm. What's that experience been like? So when you're able to have a phone call that is so rich that way, because you can see their professional background, and we love talking about ourselves, right? We love, oh yeah, I was in Honeywell for 20 years, yeah, I was, you know, I've been there, and they start talking about that. So what's great is that phone call is never a selling call. In fact, our team doesn't, unless they want to engage in the sales conversation, our team just goes, man, thank you so much, you know, for opting in, and we, we love the fact you have this Honeywell experience, you know, our founder was at Honeywell, or our, 
two thirds of our franchisees are from Honeywell, right? right, right. We, we give kind of that, that story to them. So it's a really warm call as opposed to some cold call saying something else. That's pretty cool. And then everything is run through ClickFunnels as far as your landing pages go. Right yeah. Outside of LinkedIn's landing yeah. pages. Yeah. So do you pay attention to stuff like earnings per click and all that stuff or not really? No, we do. Yeah, you we do? have to. Yeah, because uh, what we'll find is sometimes it will be a really high cost per click on LinkedIn, but our conversion, uh, once they go through our funnel past even uh, click funnels as they're going one on one with us, if that conversion, my 48 grand, if the $48,000 is not at a acceptable price, right? Then, then there's somewhere in that system that we need to readjust. So how, do, how does ClickFunnels know what your earning per click is? Because are, are you taking payment through a ClickFunnels landing page? No, we're not. So we, so we, have, to... we have to spreadsheet it and do the math, right? So we'll look at the click-through rate on LinkedIn. We'll look at the click-through rate on Facebook. I'm sorry, on, on ClickFunnels. Um, and then we know that it costs us, in fact, and this is crazy, but our cost per acquisition is you know, anywhere between seven to $8,000. That's great for $48,000 product. Right. So, and plus ongoing royalties. And then royalties right? for the next 10 years. Right. So to acquire a client, if I'm, if I'm going to charge forty eight grand and my cost acquisition is $8,000, we're okay. But we're never satisfied, right? We're always trying to adjust that number. And I say adjust because I think you have to be a little bit careful. I think you're, we are always trying to, to be well, more efficient. But there's a limit, right? right. You, you have to spend the money to be able to convert your traffic, right? right? For 48 grand, if we have to spend eight, nine grand even, we'll do it all day long. Of course, it's a great, I mean, if you were to spend, uh, you know, 400 grand on a house, you know, yeah. and, and you were able to make, I mean, what's that come out to? You're talking seven times more or, or six times more. So if you're spending 400 grand on a house and you're able to make 2.4 million on it, it's a pretty good that's, real estate. That's agent. pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, and I think for the for the audience, I think it might be important to say that it's so sometimes, and I've seen this at, at the ClickFunnels events and some of the marketing events we go to. You know, we have a modest senior care, and, and we're we're not a big company at all. But sometimes a marketer may look at us and say, "Well, yeah, you, but you're a big company." Well, listen, when we started advertising, we had zero franchisees. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a, an inflection point where there was nothing. Our budget to advertise was like fifteen hundred bucks a month. So it wasn't, it wasn't like we were soul. always a big company, right? right. And, uh, and, and it, we, so it took us forever to close our first deal. So just in the math, right? If it's 15, if I had $1,500 a month to advertise and it cost me seven grand to close one. You're talking six months before you're making and a deal. It, and it did take me that. And the problem is, is I think a lot of people, they don't know their metrics and so they quit. They stop advertising. Like, I'm not closing anything. But wait a minute, dude, look at your cost per click is amazing. Your leads are exactly who you want to talk to. They're coming to your webinars, so they don't buy in three months. Are you kidding me? Right. Just because they don't buy in three months, they're not going to hand you $48,000. You're like, ah, this sucks. Uh, this <laughs> right. isn't working. Right. No, if you know your numbers, if you know your metrics, then that can give you the, because the, the, it's tough, right? Month in and month out to just keep spending that money and not seeing what you think is a return. Mm -hmm. But your return is not in the close. Your return is in those metrics, right? Right. You got to you got to watch those. So, so it took us a while. What, what do you What do you spend now, per month? Just on LinkedIn, we're spending about twelve, thirteen grand a month. Okay. On LinkedIn. And then you have your retargeting on Facebook and all that yeah, stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. And we're always looking at other other avenues. Um, nothing for our cause is nothing has been as good as uh, as LinkedIn. Uh, Facebook before the Russia hack was pretty great, and then you know, then uh, all of a sudden, yeah. not that great anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's clear as to why you're getting the results you're getting. I mean, you're looking at all the different metrics. You're paying attention to things that people aren't looking at, right? Like the LinkedIn thing, something that people aren't looking at. Call right before the webinar, yeah. something that people aren't looking at. Yeah, you guys are doing a lot of testing, and you're you're learning a lot about what yeah, works always. better than, than others. Yeah. So. Now you've got people actually reaching out to you to help them build their sales funnels, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. how, how does that work? Like what kind of people, like what's ideal for you? Who do you want to work with? So that's, that's a good question. What this actually happened, uh, sort of uh, happenstance, right? I, I was having conversations like this with buddies of ours in the, in the franchise industry and they'd go, wait, you're, you're doing what? It's like, yeah, I just, and, and it was, I was kind of like, oh, that made sense to me, right? 
And they started saying, well, can you help me do it? Can you help me do it? And we started getting all these requests. So like, can you help me do it? And we're like, okay, let's, let's, maybe we need to put a business behind this. Um, so it was not, not that we were dragged, kicking, and screaming into it, but it wasn't what we aimed to do, right? right. I, I, I wanted to build the most amazing senior care company in the world, right? That was, that was my partner's eye. That was our goal. Still, and it still, still is, right? Okay. It's still our goal. I love this company. It's, it's, it's done amazing things for us and for, for the United States. All the seniors we care for, it's so cool. But, but now, you know, we look at other companies. And so what we're looking for is we only want to work with companies that they, they can look you in the eye and say, I have no doubt, I have no doubt that my brand, my platform is revolutionary for this one type of person. So if you come to me and you say, yeah, I got this great franchise, I wanna sell a ton of them, and I need to find people with money. Pfft, no, okay, that's, you're not my client, because you don't care who your platform is for, right. which tells me something about your platform. If your platform is not gonna revolutionize the industry, then it's not gonna revolutionize a prospect, somebody who's looking. Right. right. If you're just another sandwich shop, if you're just another fitness place, if you're just another whatever, man, there's lots of ways for you to find an audience. Go do something else. You don't need us. But if you are a company that truly believes, like what I just said, is, is you have this, this like, man, I know that if Bob, who's been in corporate America selling this, or who's been a system engineer, who, or who's been a fitness guru, who's been a whatever, I can revolutionize their lives. I can change their lives. They will build an empire through our business. Okay. That's who we, we love to talk to because it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. It's so fun. It's not work. When, when you're, and then what we do is we take their story, right? We, we, we now know what it takes to, to talk you about. You help them with the webinar and all that? Yeah, we, we do the, we help them with the webinar. Now they have to do the webinar. We, we build their they deck. do the webinar, but you help them build out. The we help them build out their deck, but we help them create their videos, create their, uh, their story, their manifesto, their landing pages, because it can't be crap. It, you have to speak to that audience in a way that's going to beeline to their heart mm -hmm. and punch them in the face so, so hard that they go, I, I can't get this out of my mind. Right. I have to learn more about Orange Theory. I have to learn more about Amada. I have to learn more about Jimmy John's, right. whatever the franchise is, right. right? And I think a lot of brands don't know how to do that because what they're really good at is making sandwiches. What they're really good at is a fitness... Helping people get in shape. Yes. What they're not good at is how do I now talk to an entrepreneur that mm -hmm. wants to make money and change people's lives through fitness? Got it. How do I talk to an entrepreneur who wants to make a lot of money through sandwiches? Right. Right. So it's a different. Uh, What's the name of that company that they, they would hire for this? Oh, for, uh, so it's DBA Human. DBA Human. Yeah. What's the, what's the website? DBAHuman.com. All right. Awesome. And if somebody wants to talk more with you or learn more from you, where do they go? You know, somebody asked me that the other day on a podcast and I didn't have a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> so reach out. Reach. Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm really easy to get a hold of. It's Marcos Mora. Uh, just reach out. Go to dbahuman.com. Go on LinkedIn. Go on Facebook. And we'll always get back to cool. anybody who reaches out. And for out. those watching the video, we've got it here on the screen. For those that are listening on the podcast, we'll put it on the show notes page. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. Man, I, I, I actually do appreciate it. You shared a ton and you didn't hold back on anything. You know, I really appreciate that because... Yeah. Yeah, I want to be able to deliver that to the audience. I want to be able to really get in deep and not just ask the higher level questions. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of it's mindset. Like, what makes you get up at night? Tell me about your morning routine. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, that yeah, stuff's yeah. really cool, but there's so much out there. I, 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 want, I want to be able to sit down with pros like you and just kind of think about how you think about the thing that you've gotten great. Yeah, cool? I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you here. so much. Well, for everybody watching and for everybody listening, thank you so much. We just spent an hour with a goat. Marcos, thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate see it. see you next week. Thanks for joining us today. If you like this episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever your favorite place to listen to podcasts might be. And if you really like this episode, please leave a review for us on iTunes. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.